Senate approves President Tinubu's request to appoint 20 special advisors. Airpiece sues Nigerian Naval Congress and Third Union Congress over flight disruptions. Evacuation of Zampa State pilgrims from Medina to Mecca continues. And in business news, Mara and Nixda to pay 500,000 government employees on blockchain technology. And an international scene, South African President welcomed his Portuguese counterpart. And on Sports News, Karim Benzema signs for Al Ittihad of Saudi Arabia. Hello and thanks for joining us. That was the headlines for Standard Boys Television News. I am Mohamed Ibrahim Bissar with the News and Food. The Nigerian Senate has granted the request of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu to appoint 20 special advisors. The President had earlier sent a letter to the Senate asking for approval of the appointment of the special advisors without disclosing their names. Senate President Ahmed Lawan read the letter on the floor of the upper legislative chamber during plenary, which the lawmakers later approved to request. In accordance with the provision of Section 151 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, which confers on the President the power to appoint special advisors to assist him in the performance of his functions, I write to request the current consideration of the Senate to appoint 20 special advisors. Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Civil Aviation, Nolim Nanji, said the launch of Nigeria Air was a fraud. Mr. Nanji stated this after meeting with stakeholders in the aviation industry, who said they had no idea about the launch of the plane. The Minister of Aviation in the previous administration, Hadi Sirika, launched the plane in the last week of former President Mohamed Buhari's administration. The incident, however, created an illusion that the plane was the same plane and was declared as the company's plane. On their part, the Committee of the Senate of Nigeria in charge of aviation has criticized the launch of Nigeria Air, saying that the matter is a cover-up. A private Nigerian airline, Airpeace Limited, has sued the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress of Nigeria before the Federal High Court in Lagos over the alleged disruption of its operations by the unions and its offices. The airline is asking the court to award its 1 billion naira as general damages, 450 million naira as special damages, and 250 million naira as exemplary damages. The suit was brought before the court pursuant to Order 6 Act B of the 1999 Constitution, Order 28 Rules 1 and 2 of the Federal High Court Civil Procedure Rules 2019. Also joined in the suit as defendants are the President of NLC, Joe Ajiro, President of the TUC Festus Osifo, the Secretary General of NLC, Comrade Emmanuel Uboja, and the General Secretary of TUC, Comrade Nuhuturu. A Federal High Court Abuja has ordered Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emifili, to appear before it on July 19th over a $53 million judgment debt arising from the Paris Club refund. Justice Inyang Eko, who gave the order during the hearing, insisted that the court will not hear Emifili's motion for C until he appeared in court. Newsman reported that Justice Eko had on October 20, 2022, ordered the CBN governor to appear in court on January 18 over his alleged refusal to obey the order of the court for the payment of the judgment in favor of a legal practitioner, Joe Aggie San. However, on the January 18, proceedings could not go on as scheduled when the matter was called prompting the cuts to subsequently adjourn the case till March 20th. Mr. Agi had dragged Lena's International Limited Minister of Finance and CBN to cut as forced to charge judgment debtors, respectively following an application for Ghanaji made by him as judgment creditor in the case. Evacuation of Zamfara State pilgrims from Medina to Mecca still ongoing as third and fourth batches 
of more than 800 men and women arrived Macau on Tuesday morning, 7th of June 2023. The pilgrims received a warm welcome from the Feeding and Accommodation Committee officials of Zamfara State Hajj Commission. The officials include Hajia Ai Maradun as its chairperson, Liman Umaru Sahabi Gusau as its secretary, Hajia Amina Mahi member, Al Haji Ilyas Maradun Commissioner, Accommodation member, and Honorable Sanusi Derga Gusau. After giving accommodation at Kazi Hotel, too, they were led by the officials to Haramin where they performed their leisure hat known as Umrah. The Chairman Accommodation Committee said they are done with all arrangements for the accommodation of all the pilgrims and make sure that they are all in good condition throughout their stay in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The lingering acute shortage of water in Gusau, the Zafra state capital, will soon end as the state governor Dauda Lawal approaches the issue with full force to ensure availability of water in Gusau and environs. This was disclosed by the Director General Media and Communication Office of the Executive Governor Malam Nuhusali Huanka in a public announcement signed and made available to newsmen, saying the governor provides both temporary and permanent solution to the prolonged acute shortage of water in the city and water supply to Gusau resumes. Malam Nuhu noted that Governor Dauda was deeply concerned with the perennial shortage of water in the capital city of Zamfara State and its environs. Hence, paid an unscheduled visit to the state water board facilities, which has given him more insight into the problems that halted the supply of water to Gusau community. Saying the governor solicits more patience and prayers from the good people of Zamfara State as more efforts were on top gear to ensure temporary and permanent solutions to the problem. Governor Godwin Obasiki of Edo State has increased the minimum wage for the state's workers from 30,000 Naira to 40,000 Naira due to the rising cost of living. Newsman reported that in the wake of fuel subsidy removal by the federal government, food and fuel prices have increased astronomically across the country. But in a bid to caution the effect of the policy on Edo workers, the state government, in a statement signed by the governor, promised to further increase the workers' wage if more allocation accrues to the state from the federal government in view of the expected savings occasions by the removal of the fuel subsidy. Governor Obasaki also reduced the number of work days for civil servants to three days, saying his government is aware of the hardship and removal of fuel subsidy has cost. And in business news, a leading blockchain based technology firm, Mara, has announced an initiative aimed at training 500,000 government employees on the entry cases of blockchain technology in partnership with the National Information Technology Development Agency and Cycle, the creator of USDC and EuroCoin. The collaboration seeks to equip Nigeria's workforce with the skills and knowledge necessary to energize the workforce, drive innovation and foster economic growth in the digital age. The first training session, which took place in Abuja June 1, 2023, marked a significant milestone in the collaborative effort. Managers from NITDA participated in the session, which focused on the role of blockchain technology in building Nigeria's digital economy. The objective of the training was to bridge knowledge and capacity gaps within NITDA, enabling a deeper understanding of the potentials, benefits of blockchain technology and its policy implementation in Nigeria's digital economy. And an international scene... South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has welcomed his Portuguese counterpart Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa. 
President Cyril Ramaphosa detailed during a press conference the meeting he held the previous day with heads of states from Zambia, Senegal, uh, the Republic of Congo, Uganda and Egypt. The presidents confirmed their availability to travel to Ukraine and Russia in mid-June. Portugal's president, who was on a state visit, saw Lisbon and Pretoria signed an agreement on defense cooperation. Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa and his counterpart discussed the ongoing conflict in Mozambique. The state visit to South Africa by the Portuguese Republic occurs in the same week Portugal celebrates its National Day on 10th June 2023 each year. Today we met and confirmed that we now are at a stage where we are going to visit Kiev and Moscow. And our mission is a peace mission, really, and we want to dub it as uh, the road to peace. The first thing that we discussed amongst ourselves is that we want to listen to both sides. They need to outline to us uh, their own perspective on the war, as well as what are their minimum requirements for bringing the conflict to an end. And still an international scene. Iran has reopened its embassy in Riyadh seven years after it was closed. Newsman reported that Tehran sent Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Reza Bagdadli to attend the ceremony, which was also attended by Iran's top foreign official Hassan Zaniga. Ali Ali Yusuf, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in charge of Embassy Affairs, attended the ceremony from the Saudi side. The reopening of the office coincides with a visit by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to the country aimed at strengthening Washington's relationship with the oil-rich country as Saudi Arabia draws closer to America's adversaries. And on Sports News... Real Madrid's balloon, the O-winner Karim Benzema, will join Cristiano Ronaldo in Saudi Arabia after signing a three-year deal with al Ittihad. Benzema will join his former Real Madrid teammate Ronaldo in the Gulf Kingdom after the five-time World Player of the Year moved to al Nasri from Manchester United following last year's World Cup. Lionel Messi, who is living Paris Saint-Germain after two seasons, has also been linked with a move to Saudi Arabia. Senior officials from another Saudi Arabian club, Al-Hilal, have flown to France to try and seal a deal for Messi after the 35-year-old Argentinian played his last game for PSG at the weekend. The Saudi delegation plans to meet Messi's father and agent, George, with the aim of completing the signing as soon as possible. And that's all we have for today's package, but before we go, let's take a recap of the major headlines. Senate approves President Tinubu's request to appoint 20 special advisors. Airpiece sues Nigerian Labour Congress and Third Union Congress over flight disruptions. Evacuation of Zamfar State pilgrims from Medina to Mecca continues. And in business news, Mara and Nixda to pay 500,000 government employees on blockchain technology. And on international scene, South African president welcomed his Portuguese counterpart. And on sports news, Karim Benzema signs for Al Ittihad of Saudi Arabia. And that was a recap for the major headlines for Standard Voice Television News. I am Rahma Ibrahim Dissal, singing by and keep watching Standard Voice Television.